And I think that's the problem a lot of men have is that they have a big space between the conception of an idea, a business idea, something that they're going to do with their partner and the time that they actually take out. What? So the where you are right now, feeling depressed, unhappy, shit with your life, your wife doesn't like you and you can't see your own cock. You think that is worth more than £97 or less than £97? Is the if you want to build momentum in your life, you've got to create that yourself. Like it ain't just, it's not just going to fucking turn up in the woods. Welcome to the Awake Man podcast. Today's podcast, we're talking about urgency. So if you are a man who wants to shift your life in any way, be it your relationship, your business, or even your fitness, listen in because this is going to be an incredible topic around urgency and transforming your life through using this lever. And we have on our podcast today joining us, member of the team, Ali McLean. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Hopefully you can all understand my uh, Irish accent. You're loud and clear. Like we've actually got a visual, and Ali's like got the the best camera. He's got a brand new microphone. Ali, you are going pro on this one. That's it. It's, it's my old porn setup. So far, as well use it. <laughs> transfer it's, it's, over to this. It's when he brings the VR headset we start to worry. That's it. The only fans. Yeah. Okay. I think this just want to contextualize this before we, we dive in. And when people come into our world and the Awaken Man Project, like we started the Awaken Man Project to help men get mentally and physically healthy and fuck their lives. That's like why we started it. And the way that we do this is by helping guys get on purpose, get on mission and observation from my behalf in myself in the men I work with is this reluctance is this reluctance to shift gears take action quickly be imperfect and this then causes a number of issues in their life like a number of issues they don't build momentum they don't get enough they don't take enough shots to get some kind of realistic data about how they can move forward they can become stale in their relationships and what we do is you know I think by just by what's called the proximity is when they spend time around people like Pete, like Ali, like myself, Yassine, and the men that we work with, they start taking action. Things start changing for them and why they become urgent. So the most urgent man I think I've ever met is Pete. You know, Pete is a phenomenally urgent man, the way that he shows up in the world. And I think you can talk to this, Pete. Do you want to, do you want to dive in? Uh, yeah, I think when you were just talking just there, I was thinking, why aren't other guys so urgent? And there's probably fucking loads of reasons. I, I think like many men are just too risk averse. Like they're not willing to take a risk, whether that's a big risk or a little risk. And we could probably dive into some of the reasons there. But too many guys play it too safe. And because they're playing it too safe, then there is no urgency in what they're doing. Whether that's making a decision on, hey, joining a program like ours, or whether that's just making a decision on what they're going to do that night, or whether they're going to go to the gym. And just taking too long and making that decision. And like, I have absolutely learned this, that success does love speed. And the mega successful guys that I get to hang around with and I get to be coached by and and, and so forth is that like urgency, it just, it's natural to them. It's just constant. It is just a constant. It's, it's always boom, 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 always moving forward. Always, always move, 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 never really slowing down. I'd like to jump in with that because... I can totally rate to what you just said there, Pete. When I was 17, I was offered to go to Holland and train uh, with some of the best kickboxers in the world. Because I was 17, I hesitated, procrastinated. It never happened. When I was 19, I was offered a scholarship to go to America and train MMA. MMA is not really a scholarship program, but there was somewhere in Florida that offered it. Again, procrastinated. So throughout my career, I've lost opportunities from not taking action. And as a result of that, obviously, we learn lessons from that. We improve from it. And if you don't improve from it, you don't learn from it, then obviously you're making the same mistake. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to change. It's something I actually take from you as well. Like this morning at half six, you were wanting to post in a Facebook post, announce an event. And it's like, yeah. like that's the amount of urgency I think you need like to get it done now. Because otherwise, if you leave it till like next week, next month, it's probably never going to get done. It doesn't happen or it, get, or, or it gets forgotten about. And like what you've just said there, like I can see that. There is something that you regret there. You're like, fuck, when I was 17, I had that opportunity. When I was 19, I had another opportunity. I wonder what if, like, why the fuck didn't I just take those opportunities? Because who knows? You know, <laughs> who knows what, you know, what that, that opportunity would have led to. And I think like with urgency and it does come 
more opportunities and whether that opportunity works out or doesn't work out it's you're still going to win because you're going to get a lesson from it yeah i think the thing that's coming up for me as you're sharing then ali was this this concept of event action and there is is i think the the actual phrase to explain it is the the time between the conception of the idea and the time that you take action is directly correlated to the likelihood that that action is going to be taking place. So for example, we decide to do a workshop. We decide, we make a decision, but then we park it for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And in that space of where we've parked it, the fear builds, the what if builds, the, the questioning builds. And I think especially when we've grown the Awake Command, the things that have actually happened are the things that we've had an idea. It's gone straight into action. We've taken action in the next moment, the next couple of minutes. We've done something small to get the momentum going. And that's then made it happen. The things that haven't happened is where ideas that we had a long time ago and they've just gathered dust. And I think that's the problem a lot of men have is that they have a big space between the conception of an idea, a business idea, something that they're going to do with their partner and the time that they actually take action because they're deliberating, they're not decisive. And then they become this guy that's stuck, not moving forwards, full of good ideas, but full of fuck all actions. And like so many guys are like, I know I've had people sit in front of me and coaches saying, Ben, have I got all these great ideas? You know, you want to, and I've had people approach me to be my business partner and say, Ben, you know, I, you should let me come and work with you at fast. I've got so many good ideas. Ideas. I'm like, ideas are a cancer if they're not actioned. And I've had, you know, I've had business partners like that. I've had people in my life like that of full of good ideas, but don't take any action. And I think it's urgency and event action, which is actually the you know, the causal factor why they don't move forward. Yeah, you got to close that gap. We talk about closing the gap, right? Moment to moment to moment. But the, the, like, this is just another example of that, right? Is how quickly can you close that gap between opportunity and then making a decision? Like, is that gap a month for you right now? Is it a week for you? Is it a day for you? Or is it just like, oh yeah, bomb, I can figure out that out real quick. I can do that in a minute. I can do that in a second. And maybe there are bigger decisions that take a day, but how quickly can you close that gap and, and make like an, an educated and intellectual decision on moving forward with something, no matter how big or small it is? Yeah, I think so many guys get caught up in trying to make the right decision. And like, oh yeah, you know, I just need to make the right. I've got this, you know, do I, don't I? And something I learned from Trav, which which was like, it's what you do after the decision that makes it the right decision. (laughs) It's like, that's probably the best piece of advice I think I've ever been given. It's like, I was like, Trav, I've got this, you know, decision about, do do I start this or do I do this? And he goes, Ben, the best, you know, it's what you do after the decision, which makes it the right decision. And I was like, ah, that's good. That's really good. It's a really good little filter for me moving into action. I think a good example of this for Pete in particular and you'll know this and you as well Ben but particular Pete because of the amount and volume of sales calls and consultations he does is buyer's remorse people with buyer's remorse are the worst they'll jump on a call oh yeah um, I'll, I'll think about it what were you thinking about you told me you were fat and overweight you told me you were unhappy you told me your wife wants to leave you you told me you're not happy with your life what are you thinking about like even something that costs like heroic man amazing program 97 pound it's an absolute steal it's ridiculous right but something just like that I'll, I'll, I'll think about it what so the where you are right now feeling depressed unhappy shit with your life your wife doesn't like you you can't see your own cock you think that is worth more than 97 seven pound or less than 97 pound what is the cost of not actually taking action so many people just like to procrastinate up for some reason like what are you waiting for yeah yeah I, all the time i see that and i want to strangle the men on the others on the other side of the call <laughs> <laughs> if it, it does it frustrates the shit out of me because i can like and i see these guys in so much pain and then and then what makes it worse is when i talk to them again six months later and they're still in they even they've gone further back and uh, hey it's just like pre-existing habits it's, it's that what the, the thing is for them to make a change they need to become a different man even if it's just momentarily they need to become a different man for a moment to then be able to make a change but what happens is they stay in that old man. They stay in the old man that's that's been keeping them stuck for however long. And they make the decision from that man, the old man, rather than thinking, right, what would the like the new me be? Like the guy that's in like three years time when I have got that physique and I have got that amazing relationship and my business is thriving. And like, I have got all these amazing things going on from like, like how would he think? okay, like this is how he would think and I'm going to make that decision from him rather than making the decision from the, the current state or the existing state. 
Yeah, and I think that you like going back to like why don't guys embody this urgency? Why don't they show up like that guy in the future? I don't think they have the modeling, you know, dude. Like I, honestly, I think that's why like specifically, you know, any anyone in our team can be a bit triggering for some guys because when we show up in a session, we're like pushing them, asking them to do the next thing, take the next step. They sometimes feel that pressure which they've not created internally before, and so they they get it from external source and triggers them they're like oh my god he's i can remember there's been quite a few times and when someone said oh he was a bit pushy when i was like what because he asked you to reply to him <laughs> it's just like it's like you, you can send a message to a guy's like hey do you want to move forward and there's like a couple of days that they wait and then you just come back to them you're saying hey like listen did you want to make a decision on that and i remember something that steve chandler said actually is that the majority of most people's stresses come from unmade decisions and guys show up in in our space like i'm stressed i'm overwhelmed i fear the future i don't know what to do and i'm like yeah because most of the decisions decisions that you have to make in your life you push into the future mm. a lot of guys they don't believe they're going to die or they haven't really thought about they're going to die so there's like this in like i'm invincible like yeah. mindset that hey tomorrow you could get run over or you could be in a car accident or you could or whatever's going to happen hopefully not but it could right we've learned that and i don't think guys really appreciate that or think about that and they have this like mindset that they are invincible and so we'll just put off decisions put off making a decision and, and that decision like i said earlier it could be fucking absolutely tiny in making a decision around what we're going to go and do tonight or whether i need to make that phone call all the way through to big life-changing decisions and we'll put them off it's all right i'll just save it to next week or do you know what i'll do that once i've got this in place yeah there is actually a really good book that you can read on this and it's called right now by steve chandler it's a really really good book and it's like the, a lot of people will reference eckhart toll and they say like the power of now and that's more about an appreciation of the current moment whereas right now just shows you how to bring a lot of your current actions back into the present moment and it sounds quite woo woo but at the same time it does make you super fucking urgent it's like actually i can do this right now and there's a really good story in there where this guy shows up into coaching with steve and he says i've got a cash flow problem and you know, Steve sits with him, goes through his current roster of clients. He said, "Like, doesn't sound like you've got a cash flow issue. You shouldn't, you know, with this amount of clients, you shouldn't have a cash flow issue." And then the coach around it, and he realised that he didn't have a cash flow issue. He had an invoicing issue. And what he did is that he would create a deal close his client and then he would go i'll invoice them in the future and then he wouldn't get around to it and he'd have loads of unsent invoices to the point where this guy was embarrassed about sending an invoice because it was so late it was like way after the work had been fulfilled and guys do this like i know guys do this a lot so oh yeah i need to invoice for that and then there's a moment he said he can't remember the name of the client but he said you need to do this immediately after you close the deal you invoice the client you don't even leave the seat before you invoice that client you even get a colostomy bag fitted so that you don't leave that seat until you have invoiced the client. And that guy, and the guy started doing that. He closed the gap between making the sale, sending the invoice, and lo and behold, his money issue disappeared. Right, I was just going to add to that uh, because I was thinking exactly this. And Pete Scott, the coin, Memento Mori. And it's like the quote in Meditations. And I've, I've got my phone out to read it because my memory is not that good, CTA. But you could leave this life, you could leave life right now. Let that determine what you do, say, and think. And I think that's, mm. well, you obviously have the coin, uh, Pete, and that's obviously I, I, partly... Do you know what? I nearly, Memento Mori, I very nearly got that tattooed on me the other day when I was in the tattoo, and I was like, should I get that? I'm so, so close to it. I didn't. I got something else instead. But it's, yeah, death is around the corner. It doesn't like that's, the, you know, that's what Memento Mori stands for. It's like death is near. Death is around the corner. Be aware of death. Right. And and this is the thing. And, and this is this is what I have learned is that if you want to build momentum in your life, you've got to create that yourself. Like it ain't just it's not just going to fucking turn up in the woods or like there's a rainbow happens outside and you're going to find a pot of gold underneath it. And then momentum and urgency will build in your life. You have to build it yourself. And when you start to build that and you create that momentum, you do that via your urgency like you then got to fucking ride the wave and like you don't in life there aren't many waves for you to ride you have to take so many fucking shots shoot 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 it takes so many shots and then some of them will pay off and then when they pay off you got to ride that motherfucking wave really really hard and you got to be mega mega urgent because during life you might only get three or four times where these shots take off and then you've got an opportunity to ride it right yeah. you might only get one 
and then you're not urgent during that time, it's you lose it. I think a lot of guys, the way that they behave, and, and I think guys, it's like a lot of guys, things that I've seen, and equally I'm acknowledging my own patterns and behaviors here. So I just want to be like, I'm not pointing fingers. I can see in my own behavior in the past, and I can see in the guys that I've worked with, is that what happens there, Pete, is that they don't take lots of shots, and it gives them a lot of time to make decisions. Because they don't like me making decisions, they don't speed speed up. So it's kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy. I don't like making decisions. I find it awkward. I'm not decisive. I've got this narrative around. I can't make decisions. So I slow things down so I can cope with that. And as soon as things start speeding up, I feel anxious. I say I'm overwhelmed and I create this bullshit narrative. That I'm, oh, I'm overwhelmed. And like you were complaining about the problem of not having any sales. Oh, then now you're complaining about the problem about having too many people to get back to. Which problem are you wanting to solve? And like that kind of the, the difference between a victim and an owner is like a victim will always find a problem in any situation. So I think what I want to slow down and, and look at here, guys, is like, are you that guy that you just, you're just slowing down your life to the point where you're not making decisions, you're not urgent as a, as a protective mechanism? So I think that's where a lot of guys cannibalize their urgency and therefore cannibalize any momentum. And this is something I can speak to with, with regards to momentum. When you're in momentum, things that seem minor, you just literally breathe straight past them so like big decisions you only get a short amount of time to make them because you're like right i've got to make this decision because we've got to get through this whereas when you're not got any momentum big decisions can be total like blocks oh i can't work out like a lot of guys when they talk about podcasts right this is a classic one i need to start a podcast oh i'm not sure which platform to use which mic to buy or you know Ali, you're on the podcast this Thursday. Ali went out and bought his micro and sorted himself out. He did it. He knew he had to do it within like a couple of days. He didn't have time to like, you know, spend months mentally masturbating over which the best microphone and, and where I know, get his setup right. Ben, because, let me ask you a question on that. Yeah, go how for much, it, man. How much of this for men is fear and how much is it what some like self-sabotage or what would you define it as? I just think it's pattern behavior that we've learned from our parents. Like that's what, so if I was to look at my mum and I look at my dad, like my dad is super urgent. I didn't spend a lot of time. With my, my dad is like, wants things done fucking yesterday. Like everything in his life is very, very urgent. Like he pulls his hair out of me sometimes. He's like, Ben, that wasn't done last time I came in. You still haven't done it. And then my mum is very passive. Like there's no urgency to get things done at all. And so I, like, Part of it, I believe, is modeling for my parents. And the other part is not being aware of it. Like listening to this podcast and going, holy shit, I'm not an urgent guy. I'm really passive. I'm letting life whims control me. And I think that now you, this is on your radar, you'll start to go, well, oh, actually, where can I start to be a bit more urgent? And that is why I think Pete, as a leader for you know part of the Awake Man team, they see that. Like the guys talk about Pete's urgency and they're like, fuck yeah, I need to be a bit more like Pete here. And I think that's what's so fucking important about a men's group. Like that's, so, you, you can't learn that. I don't think you can learn that in a vacuum. I don't think you can learn that just by yourself, just how to become urgent. I think you have to get help if you're a guy listening to this and you're like, yeah, I'm so passive. I let opportunities go by because I'm just like waiting to take action. Yeah, I think a lot of this as well comes from, when I look at like of Pete, you can look at his previous experience with professional bodybuilding. And you go, well, anytime you keep in yourself, Ben, actually, to be fair, anytime you could be at a high level of sports and you don't take that action, maybe there's competition and you go, oh, maybe I'll sign up to it. Maybe I won't. Uh, I'll just leave it. And then you don't sign up to it. Entries are full. Or maybe you just leave it. You don't compete. And then you look at the results afterwards and you go, he, what, he won? He won the competition? Like, I've done it in fighting. I've seen, I've been offered fights against big names, seen them lose to someone else. And I go, well, hold on, I'm better than the guy I beat him. Why didn't I take that? Like in some way, I'm like almost, you know, almost self-doubt before it actually happens and not taking that action, not taking that push, not having that courage. And I think from having that happen multiple times or happened previously, you then learn from that. But as you just pointed out, you know, you can cut straight to the chase. You can just join a group where other men have demonstrated it and then that cuts out the middleman. Why, why, why would I go through all that pain, all that issues when I could just join a group and go, you know what, well, I'll just copy him. I'll just copy someone's behavior. Yeah, I think when you talked earlier about sales, there's three levers to pull in sales, right? So if you're a guy who is buying or is a salesman and listens to this podcast or you, you invest in yourself, in any circumstance where you're buying something to help you, you're buying out of one, three, of one of three things, pain, urgency, or desire. So a guy comes on the call, as Pete, he says, like you, you come into an arena where you, you're thinking of buying a program, a product, a service, there might be some pain there. I'm really in pain. The second lever is urgency. 
Now, the question I used to ask in body transformation is that I would get people who'd walk into my my office and they were four or five stone visually overweight. And I was like, okay, cool. How much weight do you want to lose? They're like, oh, you know, four to five stone. And I'd say to them, are you urgent to solve that? Like, do you want to solve that soon? And they were like, no, I'm not, I'm not in any rush. <laughs> and then I'd be like, right, okay, well, would you still be happy to have that four to five stone at the end of the year? You know, it's like six months away. Oh, no, 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 no. And just people sometimes just haven't been asked those questions. Like, do you still want this to be an issue for you in four or five months time? Uh, no. Okay, suddenly I'm urgent now. And then the final lever is desire. And until they are often confronted by a decision that makes them actually take action on one of those three things, they'll just stay in the same. They'll stay because they, they haven't had what's called a Harajaku moment, which is the pain of staying the st- same outstrips the pain of change. And that's where most people reside. And that's why they're not urgent. The pain of staying the same is known. It's comfortable. I know that pain. The pain of change seems way bigger for me. And that's a power when people, someone really like, and that's what, you know, it's, it's technically known as it's a fuck it moment. Oh, fuck it. You know, I can't deal with this anymore. I don't want to be the same anymore. This is pissing me off. I'm going to go and do something about it. And sometimes people don't get to that moment until they get a divorce, they get a business breakdown, they have someone leave them. They, and that's when the external world gives you urgency instead of you manufacturing yourself. Mm. Also, desire is not a great emotion because people can sit in desire for way too fucking long and then nothing happens from it. It's like, oh, I'm just going to sit here and, and hope that the law of attraction and manifestation will just work for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's and it's and desiring is nice it's 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 quite cool it's like you can have those dreams and visions and oh, I'd, I'd love to have I'd love to look like that or I'd love to have this or I'd love to be in that position it's you're desiring something uh, I've absolutely found that I need as soon as I start to desire something I need to move out of that as quickly as fucking possible because otherwise I can sit in that place for too long and I don't really get much from the desire that doesn't get me any further like a nice bit of visualization yeah but like I need to move into okay what's the next steps like how can I action this how can I move up that that energy scale and move into fulfilling that desire I'm not going to fulfill it by by sitting in it yeah I don't know if you guys have experienced this but you you speak to some men specifically and they have created this possible future and they just talk about it oh yeah but when the business starts to, to pick up and you know that then when this goes the right way and they just literally numb in the future they talk about their des- desire oh yeah this is gonna be such a big thing for me and like but, but they're not doing taking any action on it right now the desires are just way too fucking big for where they are at like they're at level three and their desires are on level 3047 and you know they're, they're wanting the, the private jet and and the yacht and the so on yet yeah, they haven't done the level of they're not doing the level of output required they're not doing like a hundredth of the output required to get anywhere near that fucking level yet are desiring it and that's a pro- that is a that is a problem i think this happens the other way around though as well how many people have you seen that preach all the success that they've gotten and they talk about yeah law of attraction that was that was all law of attraction you know what i just visualized it every single day and uh you know just big bag money <laughs> big bag of money appeared somewhere do you know it's like mm-hmm. i know multiple people who are let's just say they, they make money uh well when you used to work in the door, people who made money from illegitimate reasons, right? And uh, now they're successful businessmen, apparently. And uh, now they preach law of attraction. Nothing to do with the hustling. Nothing to do with all the working hard. Nothing to do with the late nights and early mornings. Nothing to do with anything. It was just law of attraction. And it blows my mind how many people look at that and go, okay, well, I'll just believe in it and it'll happen. But it's just an excuse for a lot of people not to put the work in. It's like what we were talking about the last couple of weeks with Discipline Week. It's the small actions. It's got nothing to do with just thinking it into existence. Yeah. I think one of the things that is coming through from this podcast is that actually this is probably quite an unexplored territory for a lot of guys. And urgency is something that we do really help men with. And one of the big parts of this is getting around men who are urgent and on a mission. And I think this is probably one of the biggest challenges men men face is like they're urgent for what? Like, where am I going? And if you are interested in, in actually answering that question every single time we do a breakthrough week, we help guys really get back on mission because it's almost like, well, why speed up? 
what what rush towards what get going towards what and so just a uh, just actually a, a kind reminder that you if you are listening to this podcast and you're a guy and you want to get more urgent get on mission all you need to do is head on over to menspod.com and you can join our fa- free facebook group and from that facebook group we'll update you about the upcoming breakthrough week where we will help you with things like getting urgent taking action and moving forward in your life thank you so much for listening and we will see you on the next podcast cheers guys cheers guys